What's up, bachelors and single ladies? I've sure got an interesting helicopter to show you today, because the Helisport CH-7 has to be what I would consider the best helicopter for a first date. Are you George? I'm Lisa. Very good of you to join me. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. How are you doing? And why that exactly is, we will certainly get into in this video. But in all seriousness, the CH-7 really is a great little helicopter. And in this video, I'm going to do an overview of this helicopter and show you some of the interesting features about it. And if you're new here and don't know me, my name is James Bodie. I'm an aircraft mechanic and travel enthusiast, and you are watching Relative Motion, the channel all about showing you the most interesting places in the world and the best means to get you there. And Relative Motion is a fairly new channel, so it any point if you do enjoy this video I would certainly hope you consider subscribing down below because that's the best way to help more videos like this come your way here we go CH-7, as far as I know, is only available in a kit form. Like many of these vehicles, I'm going to start off talking about the different versions of the CH-7 through the years. This is an Italian helicopter and was originally introduced in 1992 as a CH-7 Angel. At this point, this helicopter actually started life with only one seat. The Angel also came equipped with a two-stroke engine, which is a simpler, less reliable, but more powerful engine. The next CH-7 model that came out was called the Compress, and I would say much more resembles the modern CH-7 than the original Angel model, and that is because the Compress is the first model of the CH-7s that comes with tandem seating, but I'll get into this seating even more a little bit later in this video. The Compress and all CH-7 models after the Compress all have Rotax engines that are turbocharged. The four-cylinder Rotax model that this is known as is the 914, and I think is truly a great little engine. As I've mentioned before in this channel, having a turbocharger on any aircraft is certainly desirable for increased high altitude performance, and this helicopter having that turbocharger certainly has that. But still being a fairly small helicopter and piston powered, don't be expecting to fly too high with this helicopter. If you don't want to assemble a CH-7, the compressed model might be one of the good ones to look for, just because it is an older model. If you are looking for a used one, I think these are certainly going to be the cheaper option, and don't hold me to it, but you might even be able to get Get one down to fifty to seventy thousand dollars. After the compressed model, they introduced the next model in this family, known as the Charlie model. And this model is fairly identical to the modern CH7. The big differences between the Charlie and the compressed model, and especially what gives it that look like the modern CH7, is it has these aerodynamic skid fairings, and I believe the rear engine fairing is also more enclosed. For a cleaner look, even though the engine is still not fully enclosed, the Charlie also came with a second fuel tank, which I certainly think was very welcomed and makes this helicopter a lot more practical to use, pretty much doubling the original range. And on top of it, I think because of these aerodynamic improvements, like around the skids in the engine, the Charlie model is actually slightly faster than the Compress. But after the Charlie model, Helisport started making the modern model, which, if you wanted to buy one today, is the one you would purchase. And this model is simply known as the Charlie 2. And if you were looking to buy a Charlie 2 in kit form today, I think you're going to be looking somewhere around $107,000, which I do think for a small kit airplane like this is getting a little expensive, but I don't think it's terrible. While the Charlie 2 I don't think has a whole lot of noticeable features on the outside, there certainly are a lot of upgrades from the original Charlie. Some of these include upgrades to the transmission, cooling system, the swash plate, and further improvements to the composite cabin. However, I think the most notable upgrades on the Charlie 2, certainly around the engine. The Charlie Charlie 2 actually has at least what I think is a somewhat interesting engine. As far as I know, it's basically originally a Rotax 914, like the earlier CH7s, but this is a more high performance version, and has actually been completely disassembled and improved from new, before the engine is even really run at all. They make improvements most majorly to the ECU, the fuel injection system, and enlarge the pistons. And this tuned Rotax engine by EPA Power does make more horsepower than the regular Rotax 914. I certainly think this is an interesting engine, 
especially for small aircraft. And I will mention briefly, Helisport has come out with an even different model that's called the CH-77. This is a slightly bigger helicopter, but the major difference is, instead of having the tandem seating that the CH-7 is kind of known for, the CH-77 is actually a side-by-side -side seating. But this helicopter being a little bit bigger is slightly more expensive at $140,000. And again, as far as I know, only comes in a kit form. So besides the features we've already talked about, some of the features I think worth talking about more. Very similar, I believe, to Ingstrom helicopters. This helicopter also has internal flight controls inside the mast versus being on the outside. And what that means is instead of having the controls on the outside of the rotor, they're contained on the inside, which has advantages and disadvantages, which I won't fully go into here. But I do think it is an interesting and rare feature on helicopters. And it also causes the swash plate to be much lower. Again, as far as I know, because unfortunately I've never seen one of these up close. But this appears to be the swash plate as towards the bottom of the helicopter. And if you're not aware what the swash plate is either, this is basically where the stationary controls of the helicopter that the helicopter pilot uses is transferred into a rotational motion that can travel with the rotor as it spins. So if you look at this picture here, best of my knowledge, what you're looking at here is the outside of the swash plate would be the stationary part, and the centerpiece is the part contained inside the rotor that spins with it to be able to control the helicopter. But this does, I suppose, get me to what I think is certainly the most interesting feature about the CH-7 is that tandem seating configuration it has. And the reason I make this joke about this being the best helicopter for a first date is you better be pretty acquainted with the person you're riding with, because this might not be the typical tandem seating that you think about, where you both have a seat. It's actually more similar, I would say, to a motorcycle, because the passenger behind the pilot is just straddled behind him. But who can think of a better first date than a helicopter? Good evening, Anastasia. I suppose, however, if you unfortunately can't get any dates, if you do know someone else pretty well and they really want to go for a ride, it is a second seat you can use if you really want to. Because as I say in all the single seat helicopters, that's one of the biggest problems, is you can't take anyone else up with you. Well, because of this tandem seating, I do think it has a little bit roomier of a cabin as well to accommodate the people, especially if you are just by yourself. I gotta imagine this is gonna be roomier than most single seat helicopters. And certainly another problem with single seat helicopters is taking any luggage with you if you want to. And that might be one of the potential cool things of the CH-7 is if no one's with you, you might be able to put on a fairly large backpack and just actually wear it in the helicopter and be fairly comfortable with all that room behind you. Or if you're creative, you might even just be able to put luggage behind you. But this really does raise an interesting point, at least to me, that I think is definitely worth mentioning. And while again, like I said, I've never seen this helicopter up close, it could be problematic sitting in that seat if you don't have something like a backpack on and there is no one behind you. Just because now you don't really have a seat back unless you're actually intended to sit in the passenger seat if you are flying at single pilot. But I have to imagine that's not the case because then the controls would be really far away. So I'll just throw this idea out there and maybe it actually does come with one of these. But if you are flying one of these single pilot it might be worthwhile having some sort of giant cushion put in that forms some sort of a seat back for your back just to give you a more comfortable position in this helicopter. Because otherwise I have to imagine it's going to feel a little like sitting on a motorcycle or even a bar stool. And certainly to me that's probably not going to be the ideal seat for an aircraft unless you are able to get a ton of tinder dates to sit behind you on this helicopter. Well, thank you so much for listening to my nonsense through this video and making it to the end. I really appreciate it, and I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, as always, I'd appreciate a thumbs up down below, or even a comment if there's any vehicles you'd like to see future episodes about. And until next time, I'm James Bodie, and you've been watching Relative Motion.